Let's start with NVIDIA, of course, lofty expectations. Um, down as much as 7% right after the earnings came yeah, out. Down to right now, I'm looking at a stock that may be down as little as four bucks. Because well, you're trying to figure out on, say, a $5, $5 in 2027. Thank you, Ben. Ben Wright, just from those. What should it really sell at? I mean, could you really, do you think this stock should sell at uh, 20 times earnings? I mean, no. I mean, this is a really great company. It deserves a premium multiple. Premium multiple. It, it, the, it's blowing away the revenues. But, David, like, have you ever been to a, if you've ever been to a foundry, I've been to a foundry when they're first starting a new run, and they just throw away a huge amount. And I think that, not that Jensen necessarily got it wrong, but the yields were very low. Yeah. So in other words, like the first, like when you Intel know what actually we have him talking what? about it on you the conference this? call. Oh, let's man. take a listen to what he had to say in particular about that ramping up of production of those new Blackwell chips. The data center worldwide are in full steam to modernize the entire computing stack with accelerated computing and generative AI. Hopper demand remains strong, and the anticipation for Blackwell is incredible. Oh, right. I guess that wasn't you really. You just can't make them fast enough. Have. You can't. And so there's sort of this a hit to gross margins, and that bothered people. Uh, but I also think that, David, when you have NVIDIA watch parties, a yes. lot when you have, say, like in the Premier League, you have these teams that, that Wilf can talk about. I don't know. They're in strange British cities. Yes. I, what happens is, is that. There's a watch well, there party. You are. That's just, yeah. See, that's a watch party. What's good is that what they're watching is us. Well, as in there you CNBC. Go. So okay. I'm happy about that. Right, but no, and that's, you got, that is the correct type takeaway, of course. Thank you. But I do think that that plus the National NVIDIA Day and how the nation kind of stopped at a certain point. Yep. No, I mean, we have to go back to reality, which is that NVIDIA is a company and Jens is a man. And they have, they did have some product issues in terms of uh, in terms what of I regard as just being, look, we didn't make as many as we'd like. But, um, but 2020, but demand fine. remains unabated. Right, right. Clearly, it, 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 we've it, talked about, of course, the the continued capex plans of all of the largest companies in the 45% world. 45 percent of the business is them. And data center revenues at 26.3 billion. Again, to put it in perspective, you're talking about what is two and a half times what it was not even that long ago. What in the whisper? I was out with a with a prominent April of 22 semi executive list. And he said, "Who makes these whispers?" And I, I said. Know. Uh, com uh, short sellers who then give it to their their compadres on the sell side so that the number's too high and they have to be $2 billion and they can't, so the stock gets robbed. Well, let's come back That's to multiple. I mean, the one thing, and what I'm you, reading here from Stacey Ra uh, Raskin, who's typically the, the, he, Stacey, the most a, significant. Stacey has distinguished himself. Yes, uh, of analysts in this area. He says the one smudge on the report was end of year gross margin outlook. Right. Which gross does seem problem. down a bit as Blackwell begins its ramp That's and true. the H200 mix increases. That's true. Although he says he thinks the overall gross margin into the fourth quarter should still be very respectable. I mean, by the way, the gross margins, just look at it as a business. 75. Step I mean, back and just look at this business. 75% operating no, no, they, margins? They used oh, to oh. try to get to 60% at the height of, of Intel. They would get to 63% during the period where everyone knew that Intel was the greatest company on earth as a manufacturer. And these guys are blowing that away. They're just blowing it away. Should it get with given that what do you want to give it a 25 multiple? Well, that's my question to you. Then. No. All right. Revenue growth, more or less, at least for the near term, seems unabated. We can right. have the longer conversation about when the CapEx spending starts to slow or when, frankly, Gen AI is taking in all the data available in all the world. Right. And therefore, and that's the worry. you don't need the chips anymore. That's years down the road, perhaps. But right now, revenue growth strong, gross margins, the likes of which we've rarely, if ever, seen. So what's a appropriate multiple for this company? Okay, so yeah. let's say they're going to do it in a calendar year. Let's say they do $5 calendar year 26 EPS Do number. Do yes. Correct. So give it a 30 multiple. Right. Why not? Why not? Give it a 30 multiple and you've got a stock that's down $30 now from where it will be. But now it's become a little more show me because we now realize that Jensen Wong in the end is fallible. We didn't think he was fallible. Now he is. So maybe some people feel like we can't give it that multiple. I don't think that's a not big call order and give it a 30 multiple on, on a $5 number. What the hell? Yeah. Why not? Yeah. But I think, David, we all were kind of surprised to hear that there were yield problems. We kind of felt that it was turnkey. We should never have thought it was turnkey. It's never. not easy coming up with a new no, chip and really they different. were putting some... Uh, well, there man, might, but you know, one I of the things don't. that he emphasized over and over and over again is the return on investment is radically great. 
In other words, you, you get it and you do really well because accelerated computing is one part right. of it. And then the generative AI. And he emphasized accelerated computing. He emphasized the need for to replace a trillion dollars in current in the in the uh, in the fourth quarter they expect to ship several billion dollars in blackwell revenue yeah right? but people are thinking about tens of billions so they're yeah. not going to get that right but when you're you're Popper still demand strong right you're still taking over to trillion increase dollars. in the second half of fiscal year and how about the industrial implications they were very good the auto was very good it was not just meta and not just amazon and mm-hmm. not and not just google uh and not just microsoft which by the way was it was mightily attacked on the mark benioff poll as we'll get to soon uh, yeah, well, let's get to it now. Let's really? Get to we're done with NVIDIA? Well, we're Do you want to critique we're, the watch party? Jim, this is Squawk on the Street. We're never done with NVIDIA. Thank you. But we may not mention it for the next 45 seconds. Okay, that's fair. Okay. Uh, by the way, NVIDIA shares are down less than 2%. Just well, wanted to point that out. There was nothing wrong with NVIDIA. There was nothing wrong with NVIDIA, other than the fact that they couldn't get the U right. Right. And by the way, there was a debate about air cool versus water cool, which was a total sideshow. Uh, there was a debate about actual use cases, total sideshow, because he's telling you what the ROI is and how magnificent it is. He gave you every use case. And when I spoke to him, David, I said, well, cure cancer. He said, no, but here's what it will do. It will be able to very quickly go through databases and find out what are the genes that commonality, say, melanoma, no, I, I do, and then be able to work back. There is a hope for generative AI. Yes. And I think an expectation almost when it comes to drug development and discovery, it will speed up that dramatic. He calls that tech bio. And what Jensen yeah. said to me, it's still not the big the big drug companies have not adopted this no, yet. No, it's still early, Jim. Right. Well, that's we what know. I'm saying. You have multiple Very years early. ahead of you. Yes. And people just continue to think like Al the watch party that it was an NFL draft and you, you it was the Giants and they drafted poorly. No, not true. No, I mean, true about the Giants. I mean, not true about NVIDIA. Giants, yeah. They, well, they got one good offensive lineman a couple years ago, but otherwise, man, it is not been great. Wide receiver. Um, I, I yeah, this they, year, uh, neighbor's yeah. going to be good. But I do um, think, David, that the the theory of last night is reality, which is that AI is going to begin. ServiceNow, then then Salesforce, obviously Meta. He's furiously Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah. Meta AI, which is his GPT. He's furiously trying to catch up to the others. But does he catch and pass it because he has all this data about social media? What are you looking at? August was, of course, a volatile month for the Dow, S&P, and NASDAQ carving out gains uh, with the Dow and S&P hovering at fresh highs. Uh, So what will September bring for stocks as we get ready for a jobs report and possible Fed rate cuts? Joining us now, Fundstrack Global Advisors, Head of Research and CBC contributor Tom Lee. Tom, great to have you with us. NASDAQ, I should clarify, will only have gains if it uh, continues its strong session uh, today, so it won't be significant net gains. Tom, um, great to see you. Long time no speak. First and yeah. foremost, what's what's your mark, your reaction to how the market is processed NVIDIA's numbers? It, uh, of course, fell initially in the pre-market. Yesterday morning it was doing all right, and then it did, did close uh, more meaningfully down by the end of the session yesterday. Well, I, I think NVIDIA is one of these stocks that has become part of like a stock market lure. Almost everyone has a position. And I don't think the results and the earnings changed anyone's minds about AI and the central role it's playing in in both global productivity, but also NVIDIA's role. But I think the sell-off tells you that a lot of good news was priced in. I think that's why uh, the stock fell. It didn't take the broader market down. I think that was kind of a a positive uh, outcome. And I think it just shows you that there's room for a lot of rotation. And and I think that it's revealing that small caps is one of the groups benefiting from that rotation. Let's talk about that rotation, Tom, and the extent to which there's still a long way to go if you're looking at the valuations of some of those sectors that haven't done so well in recent months uh, and years, or, or whether things have bounced enough across the board that you start to get a little bit concerned about valuations for the entire market, not just the NVIDIAs of this world? Um, Yeah, valuations are definitely something our clients are asking us about because, uh, you know, the equity markets have been rising for several years. But the idea of a rotation, I I think, is grounded on a couple of things. One is that the Fed's rate path is lower and that benefits cyclical stocks and small caps. And we know there's also a lot of cash on the sidelines and investors de-risked because of, you know, the the yen crisis and and just general concerns about the summer. And so I I think the NVIDIA uh, results plus the Fed in September 
is really the catalyst that is going to get some investors to actually follow through with the rotation.